Well, David, we're talking about 150 years of history, and there's probably no one who knows it any better than you, a club historian. <laughs> well, I've been watching the club, I was trying to work it out last night, for over 70 years. Highs and lows. Uh, we're on a little bit of a downer at the moment, but I think a win today would set us up nicely for the midweek game at Peterborough, and that's going to be a crunch game. But over the years, the passion that I've had for Reading Football Club has shone through without any interruption whatsoever. I've been some great highs, you know, promotion to the Premiership on a couple of occasions, an FA Cup semi final. Probably the best of all was winning the Simod Cup at Wembley, first time we played there. But I can remember going to watch Reading back in the grim old days of the uh, 60s and 70s when a crowd of 4,000 at Elm Park was thought to be something of a triumph. So I've lived through it all and there's some relegations as well, but it's something that stayed with me through a lifetime. I remember when I first went to watch Reading back in the late 1940s, my dear old dad took me. He'd been away uh, with the war for six years, so I didn't really know him. But uh, the first time we went out with him, I can remember was going to watch Reading in what was the old third division south. And in those days, uh, crowds of 20,000 at home games because there was no competition. We didn't have a television set or anything like that. And it just stayed me. I, you know, the very first game I saw, five, six minutes in, I didn't really understand what was going on, but I was hooked. And that's a passion that stayed with me ever since. And I've been lucky enough to be able to follow the club um, home and away, because I've watched the Reading play on over 70 football league grounds over the years. And nowadays, when I come to the stadium, I'm lucky enough to be involved by doing commentary for hospital, radio, Reading. So I'm still involved very much, and as I say, long may it continue. I don't know much longer I've got, but uh, I'm sure I shall see us back in the Premiership during my lifetime. As you mentioned, too, obviously, you know, it's, uh, history is a huge part of a football club, and you know, we're here kind of marking the occasion today, and it's, um, it's something you know all about, really, and it, it means a, a lot, doesn't it, to, to fans to kind of look back on good times, whether it's moments or mementos they've got, and, Kind of, it's all part of the, the culture. It's not just about the here and now, but also looking back and, and looking forward as well. Yeah, I can honestly say that the games that stand out in my memory, obviously the Simod Cup final, the games where we've actually clinched promotion. I think particularly the game against Queens Park Rangers 2006, when we were already promoted, but in that last game of the season. We were looking for the record points tally and five minutes from the end of the home game against QPR, Graham Murty converted a penalty which gave us a 2-1 win and gave us the points total of 106 which, which still stands. But one game that stands out in my memory that there weren't very many Reading supporters at was an FA Cup tie away to Blythe Spartans back in January 1972 when the game was played in the dark because Blythe Spartans were then an amateur team that was still the days of amateur football and their floodlights had burnt down and the last 30 minutes of the game the Reading goalkeeper, dear old Steve Death, God rest his soul, confessed afterwards he just couldn't see the ball and Reading conceded two goals in the last 10 minutes and the replay was at Elm Park the following Wednesday, a two o'clock kick-off I was teaching at the time, and I was due to be in class teaching, so the only way I could get to the game was to organise a nature ramble for some of the children in my class, which involved going up to Prospect Park near the ground, collecting a few leaves and drawing a few trees, and then after about ten minutes of that, making our way down to the football ground and watching Reading beat Blythe Spartan 6-1 and go through uh, to uh, Cup Tie at home to the Arsenal, where there was a crowd of 25,000, all ticket. And we lost that one, unfortunately. But every game I've been to has been an adventure, and I can remember so many incidents from all of those games. Uh, I mean, the first time when I just met my wife-to-be, and I said to her, where should we go on Saturday? Or she said to me, where should we go on Saturday, where we can be alone? 
I said, we go and watch Reading, they're playing Workington, because there wasn't going to be much of a crowd there. And I think we played in front of crowds of about three, four thousand, the grim old days. But you contrast Elm Park as it was and the Madejski Stadium here now, or as it's now called the Select Car Leasing Stadium, it's so different. And I'm very lucky to have lived through that period of time.